Friday Night Smackdown was in Kansas City, Missouri tonight. And boy, was I right about this show. And what I'm saying is, I remember t- talking about SmackDown's big move to Fox. And I kept saying, the first week's going to be huge. It's going to be the biggest show because it's going to be their debut on Fox. It's going to be a major network. And they're going to go all out the first week. And they brought The Rock in and it was going to be huge. I also said, by about three, four weeks, this show will be no different than it was on Tuesdays. And that's exactly true. It's lost all its luster, all its prestige. It's just an any other show. It's a nothing show. It's just a, a boring SmackDown show you'd see on Tuesday nights now. It's, except it's on Friday. It's on, a, it's on Fox. And the rating's are already going down. And uh, it's on FS1 tonight. It might be being moved permanently to FS1 very soon. You start the show off with the hype to the Saudi Arabia 10-man tag that no one in the world gives a shit about. You have... Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair are come out. They're, they have their own teams. They're going up against. And I think to myself, no one cares. It's Miz TV. I'm bored. I don't care about the Miz. I don't care about Hogan. I don't care about Flair. I don't want to watch this shit eat match. I know Hogan wants to wrestle. He says he can't live himself if he knows that his last match was in TNA. He needs to wrestle one more time in WWE. He wants to, get to be against Vince McMahon. So... Oh, please don't give him any ideas. Please don't uh, make us watch Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair in the WWE again. Please. It was supposed to happen at WrestleMania 8. I don't want to watch her at WrestleMania 38. They had its time. So you have Miz. He introduces both of them. And then they bring up both their guys. Um, most of the team is out. Hogan and Flair uh, have a long... Uh, they go back and forth. They put over Roman Reigns for a bit. Uh, they have Shorty G talk and they have Roman Reigns talk. It was just awful. Um, I thought this whole thing was just terrible. They eventually set up a big six man tag match, in which you have um, you have uh, Hogan's team and Flair's team, and uh, it's a six man main event. And it's gonna just I don't care about this at all. Who cares really? So uh, you have a big melee and it sets up the match in the main event. So, when you have a match like that, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch. You have Kofi Kingston, Big E, walk in the back. And uh, Xavier Woods tore his Achilles. I did not notice, but he has a torn Achilles. He's out nine months. This absolutely sucks. I think it makes sense now to split up the new day. If It's in nine months. Nine months is too long. Um, I think Kofi and Big E as a team, I don't know if people will be interested. I think it's best for Big E to have his big single run. Kofi had his run already. I think it's best to go under separate ways. I don't need to see him feud with Revival anymore. I don't know if I really care to see that. New Day's had a great run. And I think I'd like to see Big E uh, do, have his big run as a single star. We'll see if he can do it. Maybe he'll be the champion. Maybe not. But I'd like to see him uh, make his run with Kofi again. I think it might be better to be as a single star. I think we can end the New Day now. Because if it's nine months, it's just too long of a time for Xavier. Maybe they keep it going. You never know. So you have Big E and Kofi Kingston against Rude and Ziggler. So, um... There was some confusion with uh, Big E and Kofi. Ziggler got the wallet for the three, and they looked angry at each other briefly. But then you have um, Revival come out. They fight with uh, Kofi and Big E. Then you have um, uh, Rude and Gable get back in the ring. But then Heavy Machinery makes the big save. I guess they might just do like an eight-man tag, and like that, maybe at Saudi Arabia. So, well, they show a, a video package with the Braun Strowman Tyson Fury match. Ah, uh, just again, no, not much interest in that. They showed the part where uh, uh, Strowman attacked Fury and uh, the former That was kind of funny. Lacey Evans come out. She's facing this girl named Cameron Connors. It's just a joke. She doesn't want to face her. And she walks back and, like, knocks her out and pins her quickly. So it was just a stupid match. Um, didn't really care. They show Nikki Cross in the back. She's talking about Mandy Rose, her match. And she talks about Bailey, And uh, she uh, wants to uh, beat her, so... That's their next feud. No one cares about that match. I'm sorry. That's not going to be a big match. That's not going to be a draw. They have a new Firefly Fun host. I'm just sick of this. I don't care. I think Bray's losing. The thing I, I, I said, no, Bray's losing the belt. I mean, he might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I want Bray to win. I'm definitely rooting for him. Always been a Bray Wyatt fan, but I really believe he's losing the belt on, uh, or sorry, he's not winning the belt in Saudi Arabia. I think that's keeping it for sure. You have. Uh, Drew Gulak against Kalisto. Smackdown. And it's FS1. Who really cares? It's not a big deal. But still. Drew Gulak and Kalisto. Come on. Kalisto wins. 
Everyone's watching the World Series, the Astros, and the Nationals. But can you at least put some effort into this? Is it that hard to ask? You have Braun Strowman uh, come in and kill uh, Kalisto and uh, Gulak, which is awesome. Which I, I love, miss from Braun Strowman. He used to kill Kalisto every week. He used to throw him in the dumpster and call him garbage. You are garbage. That was funny. Um, he takes the mic and the... Uh, uh, he says this is what happens when you just respect him. He cuts a promo on, Carol, on uh, Tyson Fury. He says you're going to get these hands. I'm sure Braun Strowman's going to get knocked out on Thursday. So, on Halloween. Spend your Halloween watching Crown Jewel. I mean, you might want to take our kids out trick-or-treating. You might have to give out candy like I am while I'm watching the show. But, hey. It is what it is. I'd rather just like watch you know, a horror movie or something and do some, something like that. And watch a shitty show from Saudi Arabia. So, Michael Cole interviews Dana Bryan, and I fucking hate this. I hate this segment. Nakamura and Sami Zayn come out, and I hate Sami Zayn so much. He has go away heat with me. He dresses up sound like he's some sort of Antifa guy. He looks awful. He looks like a joke. He looks like some kid in college who's uh, just an idiot. And Daniel Bryan, he doesn't look that good either, but like Sami Zayn, I just think he looks like shit. I don't, I'm not a fan of his. I think he holds Nakamura down. I think Nakamura was actually... This goes on and on. Sami Zayn is talking about the environment. He's talking about factory farming. He's talking about taking care of the ocean. Dan Ebron does not seem to be interested. He keeps insulting the crowd, saying they don't care. They just care about themselves. Sorry, man. I like to fucking eat meat, man. I love hamburgers. Fuck the... Fucking delicious, man. I can't help it. Love the ocean, too, man. I love fish. Love all meat. Love beef. Love pork. Love chicken. Love fish. Love turkey. Sorry, man. Gotta love that uh, farming and that fishing anyway. Uh, you know, this goes on and on. And Nakamura, he cares about the ocean too. I guess it's Japan, you know, the, the, the big ocean. He surfs a lot too, so he probably loves water. He definitely cares about the ocean. All he does is surf on his time off. Um, anyway, I stick Nakamura... I don't really care about him and Daniel Bryan. Three years ago, this would like be the biggest match in wrestling. Three years ago. I mean, for for internet wrestling. Not like in terms of drawing, but in terms of internet. It'd be so hyped up three years ago when Nakamura first debuted in the WWE. Now, who gives a shit? So Sammy offers his hand. Daniel Bryan just walks away. They show Hogan trying to hype up his team in the back. They show Nikki Cross walking in the back. Notice it uh, bleed opposite. From Nikki Cross is Alexa Bliss. I don't know if Alexa's going back to Raw. I hope not. I don't think she'll do good on Raw. I'd like her better on SmackDown. But where's Alexa? I want to see Lexi. Hope she's not hurt or something like that. But she's been drafted. We haven't seen her for two weeks now. I don't know. Maybe she didn't have anything for her right now. They're just going to get through this Bailey and Nikki Crossing. Then they'll do something for Alexa. They will. They love her. But I want to see her. It's like, where's... I thought she'd be with Nikki Cross. Maybe she helped her when uh, Bailey and Sasha attack her. So... You have uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks on the announced booth, and Sasha has her glasses on. And one thing I forgot: Sasha's on SmackDown. I have to hear Michael Cole say it's boss time, and he does that fucking boss time thing. You no, know? she he kills Sasha Banks. He kills her character, and then he says it's boss time. It fucking ruins her anyway. So Bailey and Sasha on commentary. We had Bailey going back to Corey Graves during the match, and Man- Nikki Cross wrestled Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville was with her. He had Sonya taking a cheap shot against Nikki on the apron. This match sucked. I'll be honest. I did not. This was a horrible match. Uh, Mandy's not bad. Nikki Cross is pretty good. But this match just was not there. It did not deliver. Nikki Cross eventually pins Mandy and Rose. I think they should just do something better with Mandy. Just, they do nothing with her. I don't get it. Uh, but uh, Mandy loses. And then uh, her and Bailey have a stare down. I was thinking Sasha and Bailey would jump Nikki. And then Alexa would make the save. But uh, no sign of Lexi tonight. Uh, you see Tim Flair in the back. Flair, just, man, Flair looks so old. So they show Rey Mysterio and Kane Velasquez walking in the back. They come out. It's awful. They don't do anything with Kane. They've already ruined him, in my opinion. Why won't you let this guy speak? Okay, uh, Kane Velasquez, he's a uh, Hispanic, obviously, but he is someone who can speak fluent English. He's born in the United States. He speaks English fine. He doesn't even have um, an accent. He has an American accent when he talks. Why? Can't they let him speak English? You can go look at UFC's YouTube channel. You'll see interviews with Cain Velasquez. He speaks English just fine. What's their problem? 
I don't get it. Oh, just, oh, it's annoying the hell out of me anyway. Ray comes out, not a good promo by Ray. I don't know, I just wasn't into it. He talks about Dominic, and all of a sudden, Paul Heyman interrupts. And Paul Heyman and Barack Lesnar are in the back. And Ray and Dominic, or Ray and Kane are in the ring. And what happens is they left Dominic backstage and Brock was there. So Brock Lesnar begins to beat up Dominic. He chokes him down. He's hurting him. Ray and Kane go crazy. They leave. Dominic's been destroyed. Brock kills Dominic again because Ray Mysterio is too stupid not to take Dominic to the fucking ring with you. Why won't Ray take Dominic with the ring? It's just a stupid segment. Anyway, uh, we go back and it's like Dominic's dying. He's on the like uh, uh, on the trainer's office, like oh my god, and like Ray's going crazy and there's something wrong with his neck. The doctor keeps saying give him space. Brock Lesnar comes. This is the funniest thing. He jumps Kane, he jumps Ray, and he lifts up Ray and he lifts him the F5 into the wall. That was so funny because that reminded me of when uh, Kevin Nash, I think he gave Ray Mysterio a jackknife into the into like a production truck. That was one of my favorite moments in w, WCW history. That reminded me so much of that. That was fucking hilarious. I like Ray, but my God, I nearly died laughing when Nash just threw him into the truck. That's exactly what that reminded me of. Um... And that's what happens, and Re- Brock destroys Kane. He gives Kane an F5 onto Dominic, onto the bed, or onto the, the medical bench. And uh, Kane took a bad bump. He didn't look like it landed well at all. It looked like it probably hurt like shit. Kane's left laying, Ray's left laying, and Dominic's dead. So uh, that's what they said. Uh, they says, um, then that we uh, come back and... Um, uh, they show, uh, before we go back, we show Cain Velasquez yelling in Spanish. Uh, I don't know what he was saying, but, oh, they've killed Cain Velasquez, man. Like, it's just ruined this guy. Like, let him speak English. He can, I mean, he's not a good promo. He's not good at talking. He's always a big weakness, but at least give him something. Anyway, main event, you have Team Hogan and Team Flair. For Flair, you have Baron Corbin, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Flair and Sami Zayn row, and then on Team Hogan, you have Shortage, you have Ali, and you have the big doll, Roman Reigns, and you have Hulk Hogan there, and of course, wherever Hulk Hogan goes, Jimmy Hart has to go, so Hart's there as well, uh, it was a long match, Roman and uh, Ali got, Ali got the big showcase, they want to get him over, Roman Reigns gave Ali the big win when he gave him the 450 splash, Roman hit uh, uh, Cor- uh, Cesaro with a spear, but he gave the tag to Ali for the 450 splash, Ali gets the win, so Roman, Ali, and Shorty win. Hogan gets in the ring, celebrates with them, and that's how the show ended. Don't care about Crown Jewel, don't care about this match. I'm not excited to have to waste my Halloween by watching uh, Crown Jewel. So, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, SmackDown. Four weeks in, that's all it took. It's already like any other show. It's already lost all its prestige. It doesn't feel like a big deal at all on Fox. And it was on FS1 tonight, and I think it's only a matter of time before it becomes on FS1 permanently.